All right, guys, so we want to make this video just to kind of wrap up the first day of E3. I'm sitting here with Dormouse03. Hi, guys. And I'm in Iron Praetorian. Hello. And we're going to we're gonna talk about E3 today. And obviously, it's Sunday. That's the first day we had uh, uh, EA and Bethesda was the only two. And so let's get into it. What, what are we going to talk about? Which one are we going to talk about first? <laughs> I think we should get EA yeah, out of the we way. Should. Well, and EA's was first. So yeah. yeah, all right. So let's talk about EA. What what impressed you guys, if anything? N- near enough, nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was it was bad. Then pants though. <laughs> then pants impressed me. <laughs> I had to bring it up. How how he poured himself into those pants. That one dude had some pants on, son. He was literally sewn into them. <laughs> yeah, he had he, some w- pants. he couldn't breathe the entire time. No, he was it was those like magic Witcher clothes that they just like put on. <laughs> Yeah, right. They were. Pretty- oh yeah, because yeah, he's got his own pocket sorceress in the back. Yeah. <laughs> they just they <laughs> yeah, just dude. put it put him on with like an illusion or something like his little spell. No, um, joking aside, I would say the majority of EA's conference really didn't add anything to what we already know. I'm not a big sports fan, so there was far too much sports coverage for my liking. A lot um, of sports. Yeah. And, and they, esports. Yeah. They quickly come. Well, I'll just overview what they covered quickly, and then we can go into more detail. There was Titanfall two, a bit of Mass Effect Andromeda, too much sports, <laughs> Battlefield one, and an independent title called Fee. And Fee was probably the only thing that actually looked genuinely good out of all of that. That they actually showed. That they actually showed. Yeah. yeah. As in, you can infer that maybe Titanfall two will be good, but there was a limited amount of actual like information that wasn't fluff and filler right. yeah and I, I do like the fact that titanfall 2 is going to be on all the platforms and it's going to have story i think that's a plus mm-hmm. um definitely. so i definitely will be buying that game more than likely and covering on the channel and stuff like that just just for that reason i think if it still did not have story i would not get it i just don't think it would be worth 60 dollars just for multiplayer only but i do like the fact that they went in that direction because i think that was a Kind of a kind of a missed opportunity on the first one, even though I thought they were going to do a better job of blending story with multiplayer, which I thought was a cool idea. But from what I'm hearing, they did not do that too well with the no, multiplayer. No, not only not in the first one. Yeah, I mean, I think that I'm definitely a lot more interested in it than I was in the, in the first one. I thought the first one looked cool. I think the the gameplay looks cool, the mechanics and whatnot. But I just wasn't interested in a multiplayer only type thing again like you i don't think that'd be worth my money just because i don't like multiplayer that much so i wouldn't (laughs) i wouldn't be playing it that much you know so or actually i'd be playing it until the end of time because i'd have to get the achievements but (laughs) you know same would apply for me yeah and i think also the way that they kind of um announced it was it appeared like it was just going to be a multiplayer only game until like right towards the end of the announcement. And then they said, Oh, there's single player as well. Yeah. So we listened start, to our fans, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It I remember kind that. of, it kind of felt like, why isn't this just like an update to Titan for one? And then when they said, Oh, we're going to have single player. It's like, okay. Yeah. That justifies a new game. If you're going to add that all in, because the tweaks that it looked like they'd made to the multiplayer didn't seem to be massive enough that it would warrant a new game. But, EA being EA, if there's any opportunity for them to release a new game, they will do. It's like Madden or FIFA Which, could just be a title update every year to have a different squad and maybe a patch to you know overhaul the mechanics slightly mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. they really only need to yeah, come out with a similar. new version of those sports titles every like three or four years, and then or yeah. when they or the when technology they change the console changes. family. Yep, agreed. I think the only big change or, you know, might be big change for people that play the sports game is that they're going to put a story mode effectively into FIFA. Mm -hmm. That's all that I got from the sports stuff while I wasn't falling asleep. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Falling asleep was a thing. Falling asleep happened. Yeah, in their conference. Absolutely. Um, What did you think about... Because I haven't played Mass Effect, but you guys have. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about... It's a glorified trailer. Yeah. Again. yeah, really nothing that we haven't already seen, right? Well, yeah, they, last they year was us, the same. They, they tell you nothing, and it's like, how far will you go? And I guess that's supposed to be like a double meaning, like how far will we go in the galaxy, 
And also, like, how far will you go with your choices or how far will you go to do whatever it is you're ultimately trying to do? But I still and have And also, very if little... you read hmm? between the lines, it's how far away can we distance ourselves <laughs> from the ending to Mass Effect 3 yeah. so that you forget and buy our game. Yeah. Sorry to cut across you, no, Dormouse. No, no. Pretty much. Like, <laughs> I just, I have, I feel like I know nothing about what this game is about. Really? Oh, we mm-hmm. literally don't know anything other than it's a Mass Effect game. It looks like it's got similar mechanics. It's going to have great-looking areas. I was hoping that they might show some, you know, new form of exploration or something that was new. But it was yeah. literally, look at these seven people at their computers. Oh, that's, that's not, another that's thing. Not, oh that's my not gosh. What we want how to many, see. How much of this conference was just full of <laughs> behind-the-scenes stuff of people drawing stuff on paper? And like punching on their keyboard, and it's like, really? Like that's that's what you're spending your conference time on. Now look, I understand developers do all that stuff, or we don't get a game, but I don't need to watch them do it. Yeah. To know, I need to see the game. I need to see what they've made, not how they're making it. I don't pay sixty dollars to see how they make a game. I pay sixty dollars to play the game they've made. So I was a little bit put off by the fact that if you go back and watch the EA conference. A big portion of it, footage wise, is just people popping their key keys on the keyboard and like drawing on paper. Yeah, it just it felt lame, like they I were think. showing a bunch of developer diaries type stuff that you yes. see in like YouTube videos. Oh, this is dev diary number one, and next week we have dev diary number two, and all that stuff is fine because it like keeps yes. up interest. And there's in a the place thing. for it. There's a place for yes. that, but it's not at like a place where you're supposed to be showcasing your product games yes video games I, I feel it's fine to have a trailer for a game maybe two two and a half years before it comes mm-hmm. out and then like the year before it's scheduled because it feels like mass effect andromeda is scheduled for some time next yeah, year early next year that we should at least see some gameplay mm-hmm. and e and ea seems really bad at backing up like, this game's going to be amazing because we say it's going to be amazing. Oh, but we haven't got any gameplay to show you. You just have to take us at our word and we'll take your $60 slash £40 and, you know, and promise you something that hopefully will come to fruition. Yeah, I don't know, man. And, like, with a game like Battlefield, you don't know if what you're watching is multiplayer or campaign because we all know that the campaign in these games when they have a multiplayer component, it tends to have a little bit more high-polished graphics. It tends to be a little bit more Very destruction true. because mm-hmm. it's it, it's a sequenced event, not a random event. Yeah. Now, some of the explosions that I saw in the trailer, if that is, in fact, multiplayer, would that look pretty good? But if it was campaign, will it look that good in multiplayer? And that's kind of where my rub is with the trailer like that, is you don't know. You don't know what you're watching. Yeah. And I would hope that it would be a a representation of both story and multiplayer. But my thought is that it's probably just campaign. Yeah. And And that's my thought. And with Battlefield, they were also talking about, like, in the multiplayer modes, at least that there will be some, like, massive uh, behemoth, like, structures or vehicles that that you can use to win the game with. And it's like a Zeppelin Mm -hmm. or an armored train or a battleship. Yet they don't show any gameplay, like proper gameplay, with those new mechanics. Like, h- how is it going to interact with the environment? What kind of firepower it's going to have? Like, how many people are going to be needed to control it? It's just nothing. It's like, yeah, look, there's there's an there's an airship. It just blew up. You know, that's it. That's all you get. Yeah. And it seems like, like their excuse was that they were going to do that live stream after the conference, where they were going to show like the match or whatnot. Of 32v32, which I think is too many freaking people in a game, personally. But Especially if your internet whatever. is medium. Yeah. Well, it just it, it just depends on how spacious your map is. Like, there are maps in Battlefield 3 that you could tell was, you know, made uh, mainly for the PC because they can have that type of player count. I think console was like 12v12 or something like that. And it felt like you'd run for days just to see anybody. So if the map size works okay with having 32 people on a map, then it could work. But will it? And because we didn't get to see it, we don't know. Yeah. You know what I mean? We don't, we don't know. Like there's, 
there's maps on Battlefield 3 that I think would just be hellacious with freaking 32-32. Like it, and also be crazy. the fact being is, um, is their um, servers going to be up to the task of That's that many people too. running yep. around all at the same time? Yep, yes. internet connections. Like, I'm so. sure that I mean, they can do it now because that's the only match that's going on. <laughs> and also the fact being exactly. is they've got it all wired into their state-of-the-art right. setup exactly. that is owned by EA, but, you know, uh, John Smith isn't necessarily going to have the best equipment or the best connection, but he's still going to want to play the Battlefield game that he bought and was promised that he'd be able to play 32 versus 32 in, and then he gets to it and gets disconnected or gets put in matches where it's like less people and he doesn't get the experience he's promised. Right. Yep. It's just a lot of mystery. It's, it's sad when you watch a keynote or a press conference or whatever, right, and you come out of it going... I'm just as confused or I don't know as much as I already knew going into it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, except for that game, Fee, which I thought was a good presentation, uh, and then uh, I guess you could say Titanfall yeah. with the, the fact that it's going to have a story. I, that's a little bit something that I didn't know. But yeah. I kind of knew they were going to do a story. I kind of, in my mind, I thought they're probably going to do a story, but at least it was confirmed. Everything else was like, eh. Yeah. Okay. Like, I don't... Yeah. And we we haven't even touched upon Star Wars yet. Yeah, they had this whole big <laughs> montage about all their updates on all their Star Wars projects. You know, they're going to have more characters and stuff in Battlefront. And and that online m- m- uh, mobile game, like Galaxy Heroes right. or they, something. They, they talk about that like it's a real game. Right. But it isn't. <laughs> it's just no. like a, you, you click, start a match, leave it for two three minutes go back to it start another match and it's just it's like an idle game yeah it's something to chew through a few hours while you're traveling on a train it's like the casualist of casual games it really is and it's um yeah like you said there's nothing wrong with that but here's the thing the the people that's in my mind look in my mind the person who's playing that mobile game and like experiencing that i don't really think is watching e3 no. am i wrong in saying that they're like, not no, more than likely not unless they're playing the unless um, unless they m- mobile play other games while like they're play, doing but other i know games. me i don't play mobile games i play no. console games i don't it's not like i go hey i'm gonna hop off of my console game to, to play, play on my phone to play star wars galaxy here you see what i'm saying and, and so it's like i just don't think they're even watching the conference like, unless they do play everything but i just don't think i think most people who yeah. play mobile games are probably not diehard console or pc players that's just me i might be wrong but no, no i think you're also right. I know looks, i'm not so i think there also looks like there's going to be a, a new star wars ip from the makers of dead space and what, what was the lady's name because i keep oh miss smiley <laughs> no, uh, no 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 no, no, no. Uh, Amy, um, Amy, Amy Henning. Henning. Oh, I thought you meant the, the presenter. The, no, the one from... I don't want to talk about the presenter at all. <laughs> Miss Botox face. Yeah. It looks like she just had a face replaced with plastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm kind of glad they got Amy Henning. That's good. I mean, that's... Well, that's To me, a, that says a lot like, about maybe where their story could go, but... Yeah, Amy a, Amy Henning's, um, like, creative direction and... Is it Visceral mm-hmm. Games? Visceral the, Games. The, the, yeah, Visceral. Visceral Games and Dead Space. looks like it might be promising because... We've definitely been lacking in a good action adventure title for Star Wars since I don't know. Um, Force Unleashed. Maybe the Force Unleashed, mm-hmm. and then before that, Kotor. I would mm-hmm. have loved to have seen Kotor three, mm-hmm. or even Jade Empire two. Oh my God, Jade mm-hmm. Empire! <laughs> That's so but we get we get all of this like <clears throat> Battlefield esque stuff because it's like Titanfall and Battlefield and Battlefront are all very similar genres now. Mm-hmm, they are. You go in, big multiplayer matches, shoot people, blow things up. It's not story-driven. Well, single-player might be story-driven, but that's usually an aside to the big multiplayer matches. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I just I just feel like we have Mass Effect now, and even that's a bit sad for me because, you know, how I feel about Mass Effect 3. Yeah. Well, I just the didn't fact learn, that they I just didn't, didn't show I didn't you anything, anything about it. You know, like... Yeah, I just didn't learn anything new. <laughs> Ugh. It it wasn't enough to get you excited, there. right? No, it really wasn't. It nope. really wasn't. 
I guess that's everything I have to say about E E three. I mean EA E three. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was pretty pretty non existent. Yeah. In my opinion. We didn't talk too much about Fee, right? I'd like to talk maybe a little bit about that. That was yeah, an that, indie to me, game and it looked like a little bit like a combination of Unravel and Ori and the Blind Forest. Like And mm-hmm. also um the the art style reminded me a bit of like the Shadow World on Zelda Twilight Princess, mm-hmm. where it's like inverted shadow stuff. And what I meant by that's all I want to say about EA at E3 is because I don't class Fee as being anything to do with EA. <laughs> they bought, they effectively bought that cred yep. from another indie developer. And the way they talked about the indie developer was if it was some new thing that they'd come up with and hadn't been done by other people or even themselves before right it's pretty lame yeah like oh we're now gonna listen guys it's this revolutionary thing we're going to yeah. <laughs> support indie developers yeah because <gasps> yanni wasn't a thing Get last year yeah, yeah in unravel yeah but yeah, Fee, Fee was a good presentation. The yeah. presenter was good. They had that music playing in the background when he talked. Like it, it really, really set the mood. And I was starting to get a little bit annoyed because I thought we weren't going to see gameplay because <laughs> it was just slideshows, which were very prevalent in this <laughs> presentation. Let's just be real. So PowerPoint slideshows. slideshows. Um, and then it, and it did give us gameplay after that. He just kind of set it up. So it was good. And, and, and it's a shame that that's, what I remember the most, and I say that in a loose way, it was good that I remember that the most, but it's a shame that that's what I remember the most out of a conference like EA, when you would think I would remember something else. You know what I mean? Some of the bigger budgeted type games. But that was the one, I, that's the that's the highlight of the show for me. Even though I do like games like Battlefield, but because all I saw was just cutscenes, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know what I'm looking at, right? That to me was not impressive. Um, CGI cutscenes are just no longer impressive to me anymore at this point. Yeah, you mean they just don't. You mean you didn't want to see the same trailer twice? What? Oh yeah, and they showed the same trailer. Yeah, they just added on a little portion at the end of it the second time to make it seem like it was new. Mm-hmm. Lame, lame. Yeah, yeah, not impressed. So definitely on my to you know to to look into the future list is Fee and Fee. Yeah, I'll definitely and, look into that game and maybe that um independent not independent the the third person uh action adventure star wars mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in like 2018 yeah. or whenever it's gonna come yeah, out they said 2018. Yeah, I'm go- yeah i'm gonna be down for getting fee and i mean i was gonna get battlefield anyway like, and I'm, you might just- get titanfall maybe and then i'm probably gonna get titanfall to do you know trophies for the channel mm-hmm. um i'm just hoping that they are generous with the trophies and they don't like overload it with multiplayer trophies. I hope it's like, you know, you know how normally there'll be 40 or so story driven trophies and then maybe 10 multiplayer. Tro- I hope it's not opposite. I hope it's not flipped. Right. Cause then yeah. that would be, I don't like, I don't like covering too many multiplayer trophies because it's hard to put strategy to them. Yeah. It's not, I would also, I would them, also say teach people. I am looking forward to mass effect Andromeda, yeah. but I would really like some more information. Yeah. It needed Agreed. game. It needed a gameplay demo. It needed it. Like yeah, it's coming out it. in less than a year. If your game is yep. coming out in less than a year, you need to show a freaking gameplay demo. And now, here's my thought: they could have it slated to do a gameplay demo for either Sony or Microsoft. That's possible. And that's, that's possible. why they didn't show a gameplay demo here. It's possible. I guess we will find out in the next couple of days, yeah. but yeah. I don't know. I have a feeling like they haven't done that. Yeah. I we'll don't know see. why. We'll see. She makes a good point, but... She really until, does. You would have think they would have alluded to that, like, hey, you know, you know, let's get hype about tomorrow's shows because right. we're going to be showing this game off. That would have got everybody pumped up, mm-hmm. but they didn't. But they didn't. So, and they, they have done stuff like that in the past, too, like where they say, be sure to tune in to the Sony conference tomorrow... Uh, to see the gameplay demo of this. But I guess sometimes, like, they, they want to try to surprise you with these things, you know? Like, Ubisoft mm-hmm. always has, like, the surprise game. And um, so it, it may be that-, that they're trying to keep it under wraps, but I don't know. If they don't show Wee. a gameplay demo of it, that will be disappointing. That's pretty lame. Let's just it really real. is. Yeah, that's pretty lame. Especially at this stage of development when it looks like that they've 
Well, I don't know actually. From like, the trailer, have they really got that much? Well, that's the thing. We don't know. I mean, we we, we know people are punching keys on a keyboard. <laughs> but exactly. Evidently, they they haven't punched it enough to actually produce gameplay. <laughs> I you mean, know? you would hope that less than a year out, they would have something that would be showable. Something, yeah, be nice. So aye, aye, aye. cool. All right. What do we think about? What do we think about Bethesda? It was slightly better. Slightly better. Yeah. No, no nowhere near as good as last year. Mm-hmm. It it feels anyway to me. Maybe now, I, I will. I will say outlook. the Skyrim thing. I like. Uh, yeah. Because I've never played the Skyrim games before. I've heard about them, and I I know the the guy who used to run the channel on me when I first started the channel, he played it and loved it. And uh, I don't know what was coming out at the time, but, you know, we were doing coverage for the channel, and we just, you know, didn't cover that game. And so I've always wanted to get... It's actually on my list of games to play. So if they're doing a remaster, which now we know that they are, uh, I'd be more than happy to go back and play that for me. I don't know how you guys feel about it, because you've already played it, but for me, that was a plus for me. Really looking forward to being able to play it in H, you know, the new HD, mm-hmm. and also the fact that we'll hopefully get all the DLCs mm-hmm. in the game and not have to buy the game of the year version or yeah, buy that's how I like to buy those games, yeah. yeah. And and it'll also be nice to watch you play through it on your channel, so yeah. we yeah. can see how you experience the game differently to us. Right. I like that. I liked. Uh... That, well, I guess we'll just save Dishonored because I think we all know that was the yeah, highlight that, of theirs. that's yeah. been the highlight uh, of the whole day, I think. They had their little card game. <laughs> what was it called? Uh, Legends, Legends yeah. which is fine, yeah, but it's, it's fine. not I'm just something not a that you need player. to spend too much time on, player. which thankfully they didn't seem to. It was like a couple of minutes, which was fine. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt that um, EA should have done with the sports stuff. We spent about five minutes on it. Yeah, they just kept going and going and going. Esports, win a million dollars, sign up for this, sign up for that. I was like, Jesus Christ, man, just, just get on with it, bro. <laughs> um, what else? What else was was? Oh, they talked about Fallout Shelter. Let's talk about this whole Fallout thing. Are, well, are we all convinced that that Fallout has basically just become Minecraft? I mean, can we just be real and level with ourselves, or am I just off base in saying that? I think it's become um, like a construction yeah, set, construction which simulator. is effectively like my, Minecraft uh, creative mode, where you just basically go in and well, the the things they announced was like conveyor belts and electric yeah, shoots and, and tables stuff. and you can and then make your own you, vault your, and and then you cook. Nuka World, right. some sort theme of theme park. park. Like a theme park. And look, I don't have anything against Minecraft. I just don't personally like that formula of games, right? I, I but, would like some more story. But Fallout has DLC. never been Fallout has never been in that Minecraft formula. And then with Fallout 4, we suddenly are now seeing the shift to they they pretty much let's just be real, they pretty much took their whole presentation today and it was about it had a Minecraft vibe to it. You see what I'm saying? Like, so has it kind of changed from, in other words, their, their whole focus, their whole shift, how they're making money right now is off of the fact that you can just go in there and build stuff. And it's, it's different. I feel like the vision is different. I feel like I feel, and I think Dormouse would agree with me. That's why they increased the price of the season mm-hmm. pass. Cause God help them. If I'm going to, as long as there aren't any achievements, that's fine. But if there's achievements on it, and I'm gonna have to pay more money after buying the season pass to get content that's nothing, yeah, to me, I would like to see like Far Harbor again. See, that's that, what I'm saying. Like, why that didn't basically that, means yeah. that Far Harbor's the only story-driven content, unless there's well, there's a there's a bit in um Automatron, Automatron, Automatron or whatever it's mm-hmm. called. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Donald? Yeah, I don't know. It's just. I think that stuff is cool. I do but, too, but not the focus. But not like that shouldn't be your main DLC packs. Is oh mm-hmm. now here's the pack where you can trap animals, and now here's the pack where you can, you know, build robots, and now here's the pack where you can build weapon racks, and now here's the pack where and, you and can and put Mama Murphy in a stockade <laughs> and chuck robot parts at her. That's about the only thing I did <laughs> like. That. Damn woman. I just find that I just find that stuff to be quite boring unless it's partnered with story. Yeah. Like if you partner it with story, it makes sense. 
But it's it, the second I'm just doing that stuff just because I want to, you know, burn three hours of my day. Mm-hmm. I find that to be quite boring. It's the same reason why I I, I don't uh, build Legos in real life. Not that I don't think Lego building is cool, but it's just not a way that I want to spend my time. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I don't Agreed. buy Lego sets. It's because I know I wouldn't want to sit home and put together Legos or do a puzzle, right? And so I wouldn't want to spend money on, on doing that in a game either, right? It's just my take on it. Yeah. I mean, I don't have any problem with that, but I would like, like you said, uh, Praetorian, I would like to see more of the, like, Bar Harbor story content stuff. Yeah. and You can still do the stuff. Yeah. You I just got to put it in story. There, there might be story content like... Uh, automatron we just don't know but it from what they showed us it really just looks like you can build a vault you can build a theme park you can build conveyor belts Mm -hmm. but could i mean couldn't they find some way to tie in a story with the fact that you're having to build a theme park i mean that's kind of where i'm coming from that that there was when i looked at that i was like oh so there's going to be a story with this like theme park thing that would be cool. So, like, I th- I think that there might be, at least with that one, so. there looks like there's whatever. And the vault thing did look cool because you can, like, create your own vault and Build create experiment on people. So that, that looks kind of interesting as well. And it might have a little story to go with it. Like, it's like, build your own vault, and now you have to do this and that. So they could incorporate story into it. We just don't know. And if yeah. they do, I retract everything I said, right? I, I, I will do the same as well, but um, I'm going to err on the side of the fence that there won't be story, and it sounds like Dormouse will err on the side of the fence that there hopefully will be story, so. and we'll see who's proof correct. Well, I think we're all hoping that there will be story, because, you know, you kind of so. you kind of have to have something that would... Just, like if it, like I said with my Lego example, I, don't, I wouldn't do that in my spare time, but if I knew that there was a competition this weekend and I could build a Lego whatever in a week and possibly win a prize oh i might be so inclined to do it because there's a little bit of a narrative there for me to want to get involved yeah i'm just not going to go out and spend any money just to sit at home on on fallout and build things for no reason whatsoever other than just the cosmetic nature of building it um so if you can build a theme park and it's kind of correlated into the story i'm down with that that makes sense to me so i'll retract everything i said but if it's just building things i'm not interested personally and also, if it's just building things, and that's why they increase the season pass yeah, that's price, a that's, sh- that's shady. Yeah, that's, that's just shady. 30, 30 yeah. extra bucks for just some simulation crap? No. no. Yeah, not interested. Not, not interested. interested. No. Right, and so that was... Dishonored, I think. Did we cover everything else? Uh, is that it? Um, I'm ready to go to well, Dishonored? Some Doom, Doom multiplayer maps. Yep, they have some oh, snap. Looks like... What was it? Snap maps? Snap maps. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it was getting updated which I think some people were saying it needed an update in the multiplayer, like there was a limited number of maps or something. So, so eh, good, yeah, and good that's for, that's good cool, but who, that's who cool. Like that. But yeah, but yeah, that's it good. Didn't, it didn't need. Well, I guess it didn't really have too much coverage anyway. It was just a heads up. But it feels like then with both of these, there seems to be limited new games right. that are coming out this year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely, and, <laughs> definitely. Uh, after Doom, they, pretty they, sparse. They did talk about prey, which we before before um the conference, I was led to believe it was going to be prey too, but it looks like it's a prey reboot. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, what it looks yeah, like. Yeah, it looks like a reboot because it looks like it's kind of set in the future. Well, it is set in the future. They said, you know. 20, 20 something, 38 or something, or something like, that. like that. Yeah, yeah, something like that, yeah. And 2183. <laughs> 2017, something <laughs> <not>. <laughs> um, Damn. And so, yeah, it looks like a complete, like, overhaul. And it had, it felt like it had a Dead Space vibe to me, which yeah, is cool. Yeah, it looked that way. You know, it looked interesting, but all it was was like a trailer, a CGI trailer, so. So, yeah, hope, yeah we don't hope, know. We don't know Hopefully next. It. See if they follow the the dishonored model. Hopefully next year we'll actually get some gameplay. Right. <laughs> hopefully, which is funny because nice. they announced Prey Two a few years ago, and then I would say at least like two yeah, or three, and, and it looks like they've had a rehash. And then they just—it looks like they've totally rehashed it. Yeah, 
I mean, when they showed Prey 2 before, I believe it was set in like a futuristic looking setting. So I'm sure that they kept some of the stuff from that. But it does look like they've done a pretty good overhaul. Mm -hmm. And almost forgot there's PC only Quake. Right. Yeah, PC only yep, Quake. That was the first like, thing they showed. Battle yeah. mode. It's some like multiplayer only yeah. thing. But yep. I think that's what the original Quake was anyway, mm -hmm. was multiplayer only. So yeah. if you're a, f a Quake of a Quaker fan. Quaker fan. A Quaker fan. <laughs> a fan of Quake. You're a Quaker Oats fan. <laughs> yeah. If you're a fan of Quake or Quaker Oats, you know, or both. Yeah. You know, that, that might be, and you're a PC gamer, that might be definitely something you could look into. But yeah. it was only a trailer again. Right. Again. So, no, yeah. no, I guess what yeah. is it's releasing this year. It, yeah, a lot of these games like are coming out this year. Or something. This is. A lot of these games were coming out this year, it. man. And, yeah. And we didn't yeah. get to see any gameplay. Come on now. Right. So Dishonored So now two. that we've kind of, yeah, touched on yeah, everything the else, highlight. Dishonored 2. Yeah. yeah, it looks good. Now, I was a little bit nervous about this one, too, because it took them a long time to show gameplay. It really yeah. did. And, and they, I felt like at one point they had stopped. I was like, is that it? Is that it? And then they kept going. I think they did that on purpose. I think so, too, yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm, like, I'm glad they knuckled up and finally gave us gameplay, which was a pretty fair amount of gameplay too. It was at least a good what f over five yeah. minutes. Yeah, we got we got to see the stealth. We got to see a lot more of her powers. Um, mm -hmm. What was it called? Shadow walking. Yeah. Shadow walker. So. There was that shadow walk. Cool. Yeah. There was the like dist delusion or distraction one where you could distract guards. Was there was like the blink. mesmerize or something. Mesmerize, and then, and then there yep. was domino. Um, the domino one. Mm -hmm. Domino yep, where, you where if you people. kill an enemy, it will kill the other enemies that are linked to it in the exact same way. Mm -hmm. And and we also uh, we also got to see uh, it's going to have some more environmental effects because there was that dust storm or whatever. Mm -hmm. when she was on the roofs, that was cool. Um, Looks like we're going to have the whale oil explosion effects as well, which is nice because yep. they were always useful for our style. Kills. Still looks fantastic. It's very stylistic. Mm. Love it. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a great yeah. game. It's also going to take place in another one of the like aisles. Yeah. It's like a sort of a Greco-Roman Mediterranean type yep. setting that I completely forgot the name of, and I've only just watched the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because I think I think they said that it's going to start off in Dunwall and yeah. then it's going to move to another area, I and then the it's going to finish in Dunwall right. as well. It started with a K. Yep. It was like Cascadia or something. Yeah, some, something. <laughs> like. Cascadia. It wasn't Cascadia, but it was something like that. <laughs> but yeah, and it I liked. It appears that the entire game can be played as either Corvo or Emily. Is, is yeah, that, is that, was that a misconception on my part? or No, no, no. Uh, there was that part, and I, I feel like, because uh, they showed both of them back to back. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it swapped like they were back to back. in between the two. And it looked like, it, uh, yeah, so I'm thinking there's probably going to be a cut scene where you get attacked. Mm -hmm. And like it's going to cut to that sequence where you got to choose who you're going to side with or who you're going to not side with, but who you're going to control. Right. And then from that cut scene, you'll continue their journey. Like mm -hmm. so, that's kind of your character selection. And, and I'm also wondering whether it did kind of show that whichever one you don't choose might get killed. Yeah, it, yeah, that's another yeah, thing we talked possible. about. Was we hope that there's two endings per character, and we also hope that you don't play the same story out with each uh, character, right? Like, um, the, sorry, just to butt in, the name of the setting is Karnaka. There you go. So I just wanted to find that out. So. But I think we're both hope we're all hoping that if like if you play as one character and you go through the entire story, in other words, one path, mm -hmm. that the second character you play as doesn't take the exact same I mean path. there might be similar levels, but you might get to them doing different pathways, right. which would be Yeah, fine I'm just with hoping me. that the pathing is different. So like and maybe there's points where you can't you, go somewhere because one person doesn't have the same abilities that the other mm -hmm. person has if that makes so sense you so to you'd have to go a down a different route, path yeah. right and it'd be cool too is if like you're playing as her and maybe you're like in chapter five or something and you see corvo 
like maybe in a distance or like maybe you're, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. there's glimpses and, that he's and, been somewhere that you're at. Like maybe you can see him. He's already killed a couple people, but you don't know where he came from or how long he's been. And then you see her scenario. the and other so way. And then when you play as him, you get to fill in all the blanks mm-hmm. throughout the entire. I think that's, if they do that, I think that's what this game needs. Uh, if it's just a matter of selecting a different character and playing through the exact same campaign, to me, that's not as interesting as it would be if they kind of parallel the right. story. If that's the case, then I'm, I think they should have just gone with Emily as the main character. Right. There, there, there's no need to have two, really. I think Unless it just comes down to powers thing. and like you can play through the game and experience could, the same it, game. It could powers. also be the equality thing as well, where you know they want to have a dual protagonist so that you know nobody comes up and n- nobody but... can complain that there isn't a male character or a female character. Whereas right. to me, I don't really care either way as long as the character makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't matter to me either. I just want, and I just also, want um, I was going to say something else. Uh, no, it's gone. I'll probably remember in a minute. <laughs> but I, I was I was impressed I was impressed by the dishonored. Yeah, it looked really good. Re- the powers looked super really interesting. Good. Oh, I know what I was going to say. Um, I'm hoping that there's a no kills um, playthrough that you can do where you don't kill anybody yeah. that they did in the first one. Mm-hmm. Right, and or, that it works you know, as well as chaos. it did in the first one. Because the reason why that was fun is because the mechanics were good enough that it allowed you to be able to do that without it being a humongous pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yep. also that time mechanic. The, right, the, the, the there was that mansion oh, where yeah, you could where you look switch the, between yeah. the future and the past, and you could like switch oh, into the past. Yeah, that was really walk, cool. Was walk cool. behind a guard, switch to the future, kill him, switch to the past, watch his mate run away from the door he's guarding, and then switch back. You know, walk to the door, switch back to whatever time the guard's in, and then go through the door. Yeah, yeah that's, that like, was cool. That's awesome. That was cool. It looked and we really saw, good. And we saw a lot of, yeah, we saw The Outsider a lot, which I'd like to learn more about that. At first, when I played through Dishonored, the first game, I was like, maybe I just missed story elements from who The Outsider was. and like There, cause there I, are a few um, like nuggets of information on The Outsider, depending on, because you can find little shrines in houses and stuff. And I yeah. think you get sent to his domain a couple of times. I did, yeah. But I and felt then, like they didn't really... Like, I felt like when the credits rolled, I was like, okay, are we going to see any more about him? But it kind of never really... I think they wanted him to be like a shady individual that you yeah. don't know m- much about. Maybe they're going to elaborate on it in this one. Yeah. And you yeah. also find out a bit more in the DLC as well with Dowd. Which in... I didn't play, so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Um, was it Knife of Dunwall mm-hmm. and Brigmore Witches? And that was Brick cool. <laughs> Yeah, Rick dude. Mulvich. Yeah, so I hope they flush this character out a bit more. If they can do a parallel type storyline, for me, that's the ticket. Like that'll be Definitely. top Yeah, notch. that'll be really good. Oh, so and, um, out, of, out of the whole day, out of both of those conferences, are we pretty much in agreement that Fee, Fee, Fee yeah, Dishonored, Dishonored, mm-hmm. and seems like there was a third one, Skyrim, Skyrim Remaster, yeah. But that one kind of, or for like you, maybe the, Battlefield or Titan. Well, even those, though, for me, Battlefield and, and Titanfall, when I compare them to Fee and Dishonored, right. were pretty lackluster. Mm-hmm. I think we know. also forgot the Elder Scrolls Online. Right, they talked about for that. Bethesda. The Dark, the dark Brotherhood like, missions, bro- like, dark I bet Brother that's DLC. good. And dark Brotherhood I mean, is Dark awesome. Brotherhood was good, great in Skyrim, and it was good in Morrowind, from what I remember, and good in Oblivion. Mm-hmm. There's some of the more interesting side quests, so hopefully there'll be entertaining um, missions where you can kill people in, in innumerable ways. Yep. So not a very, not any very eventful first day, I don't believe. No, it was... We got a little bit, but overall it was kind of boring, and had it not been for that dude's pants, I probably would have <laughs> fell asleep. Because there'd have been nothing to laugh at. <laughs> well, I, I found half the time with EA, I wasn't really even listening to what they were saying in between the trailers because nah. I've, I've watched it like two, three times, so I listened to it the first time. But it's like, there really wasn't any interesting information that they gave. There was, was no name. substance to anything they were saying. Nope. Basically, it was just like, hey, so we make some games and people play them. And so we're making more of these games, and we're hoping that people are going to play them. And they're bigger and better. And they're going to be better. They're bigger and, and better. And they're going to be amazing, but yep. we're not going to show you really any of them. 
you know, uh, but they're amazing, and so you should buy yeah. them. And yeah, here they here's here's a, here's a little like five second teaser of them. Oh, okay, here, here's a picture. <laughs> yeah, in, instead of showing the game, we're just going to show the people who make the games. Yeah, behind and, the scenes, like and that, that's um, all we're going to do. And then there was even one. I think it was was it Bethesda at the end. Where we had to clap to all the people who made the game. Yes. Like, the yeah. little slideshow came up. <laughs> like, I get it, man. These people work hard on games, and I'm not um, putting that down by any means. But I'm not coming, I'm not watching a conference to see how a game is made. But with see what I'm saying? Bethesda- like, like you said earlier, there's behind the scene, uh, behind the scenes there. I think Uncharted 4 did this, like, up to the game's launch. They would just put out behind the, and that stuff is cool. There's a place for it. But when you come to a conference to see a game, you don't want to see people working on the game. You want to see people making the game. It's like if I went into a, a movie theater and I wanted to see a trailer of the next Star Wars, I don't want to see the trailer with them making Star Wars. I want to see the trailer for Star Wars Episode Eight, right? So to me, they just kind of got it backwards on that front. And I felt with Bethesda, at least there seemed to be less of that. <laughs> It seems yes, like nearly yes. every every other trailer was followed by someone on a computer for EA. Yeah, it's just like it's pretty we lame. don't we don't need this. At least with Bethesda, it was like, oh, and here are the guys at the end that yeah. made it, and it's like, okay, fair enough. But because we'd watched EA before, it was like, nah, I'm put off now. I've seen too many of these behind the scenes right. craps. When it's like Bethesda seemed to do it a bit better. Like right. here's everyone in one screen, clap, thanks, done. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping that day two. Because we've got the big boys up yeah. tomorrow. I'm it, hoping that they, like you uh, said, Dormouse, I hope Xbox? that some of the stuff that didn't come out today somehow makes it to gameplay footage on stage tomorrow in some I, of these in some of these bigger, you know, I'm also looking forward to Ubisoft as well. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to see. We're going to see how that works. But um, anybody got anything to add before we finish this one? It was just boring. All in all, we weren't, we, we weren't impressed, <laughs> right? All in all. Just, uh, 10, 10 out of 10 IGN. <laughs> oh my god. It was just... 10, 10, 10% content, 90% uh-huh. fluff. Yeah, Spiller. I would agree. That's about the ratio. Yeah. Yep. It was, That's it about was the ratio. It was so boring. It was like... And was anything really a surprise? Like... No. Like... Prey. Fee, Fee maybe. Fee surprised Fee. me. I Fee never w- heard about that game Prey before. was a little Fee, Fee bit a- of a surprise, but people kind of knew that Quake. that was being made. And... Qu- I'd say Quake was probably a surprise for me. I didn't see them bringing Quake back anytime yeah. soon. But yeah. no, yeah, Battle, Battlefield else. we knew about, Andromeda we knew about, Titanfall 2 we knew was coming. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Star Wars stuff. Yeah. Oh, the, the, the new IP for the Star Wars stuff. Yeah, but they didn't show any of it because they don't have no, anything yeah. to show because it's coming out in two no, years. They did. But, but they did, they did yeah. show something for it. It's a guy walking out of a door into somewhere that looks like it's Tatooine but could be Jakku. Oh. That's about yeah. as much as yeah. we know. Yeah, I wasn't impressed. No. I was not impressed. I, I could easily go back and get a refund with, on my time mm-hmm. for that. Yeah, I was more impressed with E3 from last year. It feels like this year the games are thin on the ground. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Last year, we got to all admit, even if you're not a fan of some of the games that got, you know announcements last year it was pretty crazy e3 last mm-hmm. year for just crazy announcements and uh this one unless they unless they pull out some crazy stuff tomorrow we don't know i mean they, these when you get up to the big three they might they might drop some bombshells on us but but if they're lazy we like today was see, it's gonna I suck guess. yeah we shall see so we shall see but we're gonna be doing some follow-up videos guys up on the channel uh, we don't really know how we're going to structure it yet. It might be live commentary. It might be afterthoughts. But just stay uh, stay tuned to the channel. We'll be posting some more content. And if you guys will let us know what you thought about these two conferences in the comments below. We'll see you guys in the next one. You guys be good.